Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria, and I'm afraid I've got some really bad news for you guys. Um, some of you will have been watching my uh, Facebook page, or well, the Scholar Gladiatoria Facebook page, um, in the last week, link below. And um, I'm afraid to report that contrary to one of the things that I posted on there, my toolbar is not Woots. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so I got a really, really nice toolbar. So let's have a look at this toolbar. Um, so here it is. It's massive. Okay. When I, when I say it's massive, obviously it's not huge, but I'm used to uh, toolbars, toolbars, toolbars. For any of you in India watching, yes, I know that in most parts of India it is pronounced Talwa or Talwa or something like that. Um, it depends where you're from in India, different people pronounce it differently. India is a big old place with a lot of people, um, uh, different dialects, even languages, um, different um, even styles of tulwa, it has to be said, okay, different styles of sword as well. Um, but I'm used to most tulwas or talwas, it's usually spelt tulwa as in T-U in um, British sources uh, in the modern period and right the way back to the 18th century. Okay, so that's why I normally say tulwa because it makes it easier to search if you're googling for things or looking in historical documents. It's usually spelled tulwa in English, um, but um, it's even sometimes spelled T-O-O-L, <laughs> tulwa. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm used to them usually having kind of 28, 29, 30 inch blades, sometimes 31 inch blades. Um, so they're not usually particularly long compared to um, most European sabers, for example. Um, they're usually a little bit shorter than those, um, but they're probably of a similar length to most medieval arming swords, for example. So, you know, they're a completely different type of sword. So, um, can, you know, th that, is, that is the normal length that they are, but this is somewhat bigger. This is 33, uh, inches in a straight line. Let's just whip out my um, measuring tape um, and measure it in a in a straight line like that. Okay, which is boom, 33 inches. Oh, for um, for centimeter aficionados or metric people, you metric people, that's 84 centimeters, maybe slightly under 84 centimeters. Now that might not sound terribly long to you, but you've got to remember that this is a curve. If you straighten that out, that would be out to about, what, 35, something like that. Let's actually find out. I know you guys like it when I measure and weigh things, so let's see if we can curve this around. This is, I'm going to regret doing this already, but um, let's try and curve it around. No, it's just not going to work. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was a great idea, but you've just seen me, you've just seen a Matt Easton fail on camera there. Um, of which I'm sure you'll say, oh, but Matty, Matt, you're always doing fails on camera. I, yeah, an estimation is roughly about 35 inches, I think. Um, it's not going to work. I'd have to do it with a piece of string or something. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a big blade for this style of sword. And, and is it, is it hefty? It is hefty. I actually don't have my scales in the room right at the moment. Um, so I can't, so I can't weigh it for you, but I can tell you where the point of balance is. And it's out there. It's quite far from the hand. Okay. That is what about 10, 10 inches. I would say it's balancing on. Yeah. That's about 10 inches from, well, let's, let's measure it. I do I, I have a tape measure. Don't I? Why am I guessing length? Um, as you can tell, I have not prepared for this uh, this video, um, but I'm shooting lots of videos today, so that's my excuse. Um, yeah, it's nine and a half, nine and a half inches. So I overestimated, um, but yeah, so nine and a half inches from the guard, um, and it, it's a it's a hefty old blade. Now, when I first got this, it showed all the potential signs of maybe being Woots. Why did I think it was Woots? Well, first of all, the blade section is simple. It's got no fullers in it. Now, this isn't always, you know, sometimes you get get Woots blades with fullers and stuff, but very often when you get this kind of what I call a slab blade, that is a flat or a wedge section blade, like that one behind me, which is Woots, okay? So you can see it's just a great big um, slab. Only one side is etched, incidentally, but you guys, if you haven't seen my video on Woots etching, have a look at the video where I do this because I think it's I think it's quite interesting. It's one of my favourite videos that I've ever done actually, and I like watching it back. I don't watch it back regularly, but I have watched it back. Um, and um, yeah, that so that is Woots, and I kind of knew it was Woots when I got it because as soon as I got it, I could see the pattern even through the the dirt and grime and patina that was built up on the surface of the blade. 
The process, incidentally, for those of you who haven't watched, the, and I do recommend you watch the video, it's, um, so just search in my videos for Woots, W-O-O-T-Z, and um, uh, the, the process is actually quite simple. Um, so I use ferric chloride as an etchant. You can buy ferric chloride from anywhere that does stuff to do with computers or electronics because it's used in circuit board etching. Um, and I dilute it with water. Um, I do sort of like one part, roughly one part ferric chloride to five parts or four parts um, water. The two things react, um, I believe. And it's a type of acid um, and um, essentially it very gent relatively gently um, etches the blade, uh, which brings out the differing pattern between the two types of steel, or um, the pattern, shall we say. It's not two types of steel, because it's, it's a Wootz blade is different to that, but it's the pattern in the, the steel. It brings it out, it accentuates it, okay? Um, so when I got this blade, it showed all of the signs of potentially being Wootz in that it was a slab blade, with no fillers, and yet it was clearly high quality. Now, how did I know it was high quality? Well, the first thing that kind of gives it away a bit is the hilt. So as you can see, the hilt is marvelous. <laughs> I'm trying, I, just, I just noticed how close my face is on camera, but focus on the sword, not on my face. Um, and it's just beautiful. Um, it's covered in silver and gold. Um, and you can see it's beautiful um, patterns. It is more rubbed off on that side than this side. Prr, who knows why? I don't know why. It may be because that's the side that rubs against the hand the most. Something like that. I don't know. Um, but this side is absolutely beautifully preserved um, with floral decoration, mostly in silver koftgari uh, with gold um, applique um, as well, gold leaf. Um, and it's all solid. A beautiful, beautiful great blade, so it's very pleasing in the hand, there's no movement there and it's a whopping great blade. Also, um, it's, you'll notice the disc is curved upwards, so some tulwars have a very flat disc, as it happens this is a fairly large hilt, so this one's actually reasonably comfortable for me as well, um, but the disc is more likely to be uncomfortable if it is flat and large. If it is curved away like that, or indeed like a pulwa, like an Afghan pulwa, which is kind of a hemisphere, um, then it's more comfortable. It feels more like a, a conventional pommel. So really this gives no, no issue at all in the hand. It's a large hilt and it's a curved disc, so it's very comfortable for me to hold, uh, even not being massively used to using tulwars, at least in training. I usually use obviously sabres. Um, so a nice big hilt, curved disc, covered in silver and some gold, solid on the hilt, slab blade. There were some other clues, not just the fact that it's a slab blade, but it does have, unfortunately you won't be able to see because it's hidden underneath a langette. Uh, these are the langettes here. What are the langettes for? That's a good question. That's a video in its own right, but I'll tell you the short answer. They're for gripping onto the scabbard, okay? So they go either side of the scabbard, uh, so when you slide it into the scabbard, of which this doesn't have one unfortunately, um, the, the langettes go either side of the scabbard and they form a, a seal around it which partly keeps it in the scabbard but moreover it prevents moisture from getting down into the scabbard as well. So it acts, acts a bit like a proverbial rain flap. A lot of things are called rain flaps which aren't rain flaps but anyway. Um, but it forms a seal around the scabbard which is a useful thing for numerous reasons. But underneath the langette is a, um, an, uh, the maker's mark. Now, when you get maker's marks on a blade, it generally <laughs> with an Indian or Indo-Persian sword is indicative of it being a good quality piece. And uh, clearly this is a good quality piece. There is another clue as well, and hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll just make, I'm just holding this quite gingerly because it's still reasonably sharp. Um, there we go. If you look just there, you can see an inlay as well with some script in... Urdu, I don't know, um, Sanskrit type script, um, and I have asked some friends of mine on Facebook if they know what that means, but I haven't had any um, responses yet. Um, so at the moment, I don't know what that means, but generally speaking, when you get inlay decoration on a blade and a maker's mark and a slab blade, you think it's gonna be Woots. And so quite confidently, I went on the Facebook page and said, I think I found some more Woots. Do you want me to make a video? showing you the etching of the woots and bringing the pattern out. But I thought I'm gonna be cautious because I'm not completely sure. I, I felt 90% sure that this was gonna be woots. Um, but at the weekend, so it's uh, Tuesday now, so at the weekend just gone, 
I managed to get some free time to go out into the uh, the garden room where I sometimes film um, and try a little bit of test etching and I did indeed do a bit of test etching and it did bring a pattern out but it's not Woots. Um, it is essentially a pattern welded blade. Now just to say about that, so a lot of people in the modern world think of, so sometimes as we've talked about in previous videos, pattern welding is referred to as Damascus. Pattern welding is not Damascus, okay? The term Damascus or Damask is kind of obscure in its origins but should only be applied to um, Woots blades or swords, uh, swords specifically made of Woots from, um, from Damascus or, or Syria in general, um, but it's not pattern welding. We can say it's not pattern welding in general, but um, what we should also say as well is in the modern world, pattern welding is seen as special and we kind of think of a mono steel blade or a pattern welded blade, okay? But you have to remember how were steel blades made historically before modern factories and the Bessemer converter existed to create modern steel. Modern steel is cast steel. And what that means is it's been taken to melting point and then slowly let to, um, to cast into a billet um, which makes it homogenous. Okay? Now Woots is actually similar to modern cast steel in that Woots in a different process, a different way, a more rudimentary way, is melted and cast. So Woots is a homogenous cast steel but that was highly, highly unusual. Most historical steels were not made like that. They were made by smelting ore and then basically squishing them all together, forge welding them all together, folding and uh, making a billet with hard work. They didn't ever melt the steel, okay? So not being melted and it being essentially forge welded together is essentially like pattern welding, okay? Now it might not be to put a deliberate pattern into the steel, but nevertheless, if you're taking different bits of, 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 of iron and, and forging them together and then increasing the carbon content such that you create, you turn the iron into steel, what you're essentially doing is creating a type of pattern welding. And that's what we have here. So these types of blades, this was made of steel which had probably never ever been melted. And that was typical of um, medieval European sword blades. Um, well, so basically it was typical of all sword blades. Um, it was typical of, you know, most um, Chinese, European, African, whatever, Middle Eastern, most typical sword blades were made in this way and they weren't Woots. The thing which made Woots special was that it was crucible steel, it had been melted. So if you etched most historical swords, not made of modern steel like your 1095 or 1075 or whatever, um, or 01, if you, if you etch a modern blade you'll get nothing because it's a homogenous piece of steel with nothing interesting going on inside it, at least at that level. Um, but if you etch a historical sword, if you take a medieval European sword and etch it, you will get patterns in it. Um, quite Even if you etch a piece of wrought iron, you'll get patterns in it because of the way it's produced. So that's what we've got here. We've got essentially a pattern welded but not intentionally pattern welded blade um, and it's not I'm sad to say Woots um, so I'm really sorry to disappoint you guys this is not a Woots blade but it remains an absolutely gorgeous tulwar which will stay in my collection I'm gonna have to filter um, one or two other tulwars out of my collection I'm afraid but you know good news that means they're gonna appear on Eastern Antique Arms for sale um, but it is an absolutely lovely tulwar but I'm Really sorry to say that it is not Woots. I have to wonder to myself if it was made with the intention of looking reminiscent of a Woots blade. The final thing I want to talk about this particular sword is the shape of it, okay? And this is what I would personally normally call a Shamshir style blade in that it's extremely curved, yeah? More, um, far more than a Tulwa. This is a fairly typical 18th century style, or it might be 19th century, but anyway, these existed in the 18th century as well, in fact, back to the 17th. This is a fairly typical style of Tulwa. Uh, I don't know whether this is an Indian or a European blade. It could be either, okay? But you'll see that this is a very different style, very different style of blade. And um, the lower blade, the, the, the more fancy one essentially, the new acquisition, as well as being longer, that's not always the case, it's more curved and um, 
more uh, it's thick essentially okay it's so it's less broad and more thick almost a bit like a katana actually and that is quite typical of middle eastern blades so if we look at the blade that way it is a thick blade it has distal taper all the way down but it is thick and not so broad and the degree of curvature and the fact that it gets more and more slender towards the point is quite typical of Mid middle eastern and north african um, swords so there we go, a very, very interesting tour, but I'm very sorry to say it's not Woots. Um, but maybe I'll find some more things to say about this uh, tour in the future. I can't unfortunately cut with it because it's not sharp enough, but maybe it should have a restored edge, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll have a think about that. And um, uh, I will see you for the next video. And maybe next time I will find some Woots. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We've got extra videos on Patreon, t-shirts on Spreadshirt, and I hope to see you for the next video.